Hey guys, what's going on? This is your girl, Model E, of course, of the E and Friends podcast. Thank you for tuning into another bi weekly episode with your girl. So, up front, I'm going to apologize. They are doing some maintenance outside and they just have to do it while I'm doing my podcast. But we all know we're podcasters, we know things happen just as long as we get the words spread out, right? All right, guys. So, for my solo dolo tonight, I have a great conversation for you guys. I think you guys will very much enjoy it. But before we go ahead and start, I want you guys to continue to follow me on Instagram at E and Friends Pod and on Twitter at Erica Jones with the Z on the end. And also, thank you for telling a friend to tell a friend about your girl, Model E. I appreciate it. And y'all stop looking at my hair because I know my hair needs to be done, but I am in my first year of my lot stage and a girl is loving it okay now I've been approached with this question and it goes a little something like this Erica have you ever been with a female yes look okay I'm I'm gonna go say this now back when I was younger in my early 20s I was, you know, fresh out of college. And and I think at the time, you know, I had started doing some online classes at an online university. So it was in my early 20s, like straight early 20s. So I um I had just moved from home and you know, I went to a whole different city and everything just to kind of, you know, start a new, fresh little life. And at this apartment complex that I lived in, and I lived with, it was my boyfriend at the time, we lived together. And so we were at the pool. We were at the community pool together. And I was just doing my thing. You know, I had on a two-piece bathing suit, you know, something just very simple. And I have always been, you know, very small. And so... I am bigger now than I was back in my 20s. So just imagine, right? <laughs> but look, I guess I was still cute and sexy, I guess. So I was in the pool for a while, you know, just doing my thing. You know, a girl don't really swim like that, but you know, but I would get in some water that I had to do something. So my boyfriend at the time, he was like in the back, like near the steps, and I was like in the middle of the pool. And on the sidelines, you know how you got the, the chairs lined up around the pool? Well, so happened it was two girls out there. And one was a little more boyish, okay? And the other was like a regular girl. So we all know what it is. So I realized that the one who looked a little bit more boyish you know, was looking at me a little more than usual than the normal person. And so I kept looking back at my boyfriend at the time and he was saying, just looking at me smiling like, like this, this, and then doing his eyes like that. And I'm like, why is he doing that? Like, what's up? So I went back towards him and I was like, why are you doing that? And he was like, oh, you don't see that girl looking at you like that, right? And I was like, I did notice that she was looking a little more often, <laughs> but I didn't start nothing of it, you know? So, um, you know, I, I continued to stay in the water and everything like that. I think it entertained because at that time, look, I was young, very young. I wasn't even thinking about nothing like that. Like, not no girl. I was like, oh, you know, all that stuff was like, I ain't down with that, right? <laughs> I'm like, I ain't down with that shit. So, you know, it, I never let it phase me or anything like that. It never phased me. And so, um, so she continued to look or whatever and everything like that. And at that time, for some reason, God, and I kid you not, I had got spots all over my body, like just off the blue, my arms, my waist, my legs, everything like covered in spots. I look like a leper. So my mom used to tell me that I was turning into a leopard. I went, 
to a dermatologist. I went to my doctor. No one didn't know what it was. You know, they just said that I had a little bit of um, eczema, right? So I started getting some stuff like eczema cream and I put on it probably for about a couple months. And I, I noticed that it still was doing the same thing. And it lasted for about six months. And then poof, all of a sudden it was gone. Like, I really thought that was weird. <laughs> and that's not the first time I had something like that weird happen to me throughout my life. And also, you know, when I was younger as well, too, there was some things that I saw, but we ain't going to get into that. That's going to be another podcast for another day. <laughs> so, you know, now I just consider myself, I'm maybe I'm just a special child. You know, I've been getting messages sent to me throughout my life and not really take heed to it. So back to the pool instant. So I'm just doing what I do in the pool, playing in the water and everything. And I continue to, you know, I look her direction. And when I finally did look at her direction, like just for the one last time, don't you know that it helped her smile at me? Like she did a smirk, like <laughs> it was like a sneaky little smirk. At that point, I was like, all right, man, this right here is too much. I ain't with this shit. <laughs> this is too much. But on the other hand, my boyfriend at the time, he thought that shit was funny. I don't know if he thought it was sexy, but a girl that looked like a boy is not sexy to me. Okay. So I was approached with this question, and this was through social media. And I basically told the person, you know, I asked them, why do you think that? Like, what made you ask that question? And she said, because, and it was a female, she said, because you are so friendly online. You know, I see you talk to a lot of girls. And you're pretty. She's saying, I'm not saying that you look like a boy. You don't act like a boy. But I just wanted to know because of your reaction, you know, that how I talk to people. And I told her, I said, no, I am not interested in girls. I said, um, I'm just, that's just me. I'm that type of person. I will talk to anybody, to be honest. It's just me. And so she goes on and she says, well, I'm not trying to, you know, hit on you or anything like that. I just thought that you were a nice person and that you were pretty and I like the way that you move like that. So when somebody say, I like the way you move, like, they trying to get in my fucking game. <laughs> so... So I went and now this, I don't even know this person on social media. I'm not even friends with this person or anything. I'm assuming that they have been looking at my social media and following me. And so I go on their page and I look and she looks like a normal, regular girl, you know, like me, you know, she was pretty, she was tall, she had long hair. Um, you know, she kind of fit the description, like, even if I did attempt at that or wanted to pursue that, she might go be a girl, you know, like that. So, um, another thing that it came to my attention, she started following me on social media. So, you know, I started following her back, you know, no big deal. Somebody followed me, I followed them back, just simple as that. But if anything, you know, starts to happen that I don't feel comfortable with, then I'm going to immediately follow. Not the first time that it has happened. And so everything was cool. You know, she started liking my stuff, just like a normal person, nothing on Twitter, anything. She never approached me um, with anything. Um, everything was just cool. Now that kind of opened my eyes to something similar to, you know, what my husband always tells me. <laughs> he just basically, he didn't say that, you know, he think I like girls or anything like that, but he always tell me that my reaction on social media, that I meet a lot of people online. And quite frankly, I do. And I meet these people, these people are strangers. I don't know anything. I don't know these people from a can of paint. 
And most of the time, they are so dope in her pool. Now, me, I'm a person who go off vibes. If you have a very dope vibe that kind of matches my vibe, then we vibing. That's how it is. I've tried to hang out like with the group of girls because I was told that I don't go out on them. Me, I don't give a fuck about going out. I don't give a fuck about hanging with other people because I am kind of a reserved, kind of lonely individual. Like I'll do shit on my own. I really don't need nobody to do anything with. And I don't feel bad about it. I don't have no type of emotion about it because that's just me. I don't mind. One thing I always say, I came in this world by myself and I'm going to leave out of this world by myself. And as long as I have, you know, my family and my few friends, I can count on my hands, I'm good. So um, I, I, I don't mind it. Now, I meet people because they're genuinely, they seem nice. Now, I have about three people that I can count on my hands that I talk to on a daily basis. I don't know them. I never met them. But we either meet like from a job, you know, because I work from home and I work for, you know, various companies. That's how I do. And so I meet people. And others is just by maybe being in groups and stuff and we kind of have like the same interests or we kind of have similar situations going on and we just you know connect like that and these people are so cool so down to earth to where we call each other sis <laughs> and everybody is not my sis you know and I and we do things for each other. We keep communication. We keep each other in the know of what's going on. If there's anything that, you know, that's going on out in the world, we make sure we tell each other, hey, you better go do this. You better go do that. You know, it's a time limit, you know. Um, we exchange gifts, like birthdays and stuff like that. It's like having... A pen pal, you know, like when you were in school in elementary and you used to write to a pen pal, someone in a whole different other city or country that you never met, but it's just a friend, you know, that's how it is. And, um, you know, these people, they are very supportive. They are um, supportive of what I do. And for me, I feel like I'm a person who I am a shoulder. So people can really come to me and express how they feel. And I'm not a person that who is just going to tell them what they want to hear. All my friends, people I come in contact with, they come to me and they say, E or Erica, I know I can come to you for this because you will tell me the truth. You're just not going to say okay with what I'm doing and give me what I want to hear. I know you want to be real with me. And that's the whole issue. Whether we are friends or not, I am going to give you the real because in all honesty, if it was me, I would want somebody to tell me something if it's not right. Don't put me out there in the middle of a pack of wolves and you know what's about to go down. That's not fair. That's not friends. So these people, um, you know, I, I really, I hold them to a status because they're all like my sis. And I know that I'm a very nice person. I consider myself to be a nice person. I like people, but I really don't like people. If you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I like people, but I don't like people. Now, uh, I'm an introvert. I am, oh my God, like shy as hell. Y'all may not think that, but... Over the years, I have learned how to overcome that shyness and, um, you know, insert it with something else in order to keep it down, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> in school, I had a big issue with public speaking. 
And still today I will. Like every time I got to speak or say something, I feel like I get a sense of anxiety. And now that I am older, it is worse. <laughs> you know, I get all these heart flutters. My, my heart feels like it's coming out of my chest because I'm just so nervous. But I understand. I know what I got to do because I have done this before. But it just seems like every time I do something, it's the beginning. And a lot of times that makes me feel better about what I'm doing is because I know that I have to do this and people are looking for me to do this. And, you know, one thing I hate is like with my friends and stuff, they know, okay, Erica is the one that who can talk. She knows what is going on. We're going to put her out there in the front. So already know what it is so I have to prepare myself to be the voice for everyone <laughs> and I'm the introvert okay so stop doing that to me guys <laughs> but yeah so I don't know about like just being in a relationship um or not being full in a relationship but you know being with a girl um I don't know. I mean, what, like, what do we, what will we do? You know, because I can't see myself looking over vagina. I can't see. I, I, I look, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you. I can't, I can't picture it. I've seen it. Okay. But I don't know if I can just come out and actually do that. Because I understand how it feels, okay? And it feels damn good, you know, when a guy is doing it to you. But when you are giving it and giving it to another woman, but they say that you as a woman understand and you know what to do if you do do that. But I don't know. But, you know, sometimes I have on my joggers. I wear my little baggy stuff. But at the same time, I don't think I look like a boy. I don't think I act like a boy at all. Now, if you would ask my husband sometimes, he would say, yeah, you a boy. You was not girly-like at all. And the only reason why he say that is because when I was a child, I never really played, like, with toys, you know, bobby dolls and, you know, stuff like that. I'm like, uh, I can care less. I had one doll baby in my life that I actually, excuse me, tried to carry around and everything. And <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I had got it for Christmas and my grandfather, God bless his soul, he hated that doll so bad. And I, I know the reason why, but I'm not going to tell y'all, but um, it, it was just so funny. And that was the only doll that I ever had. You know, other kids used to play with, you know, Barbie dolls and, you know, Ken and have a little dream house and stuff like that. Me, I just had my little easy bake oven because my ass loved cookies and cakes and stuff like that. So I had a little easy oven because I was going to make sure that I was set up for life to make those things for me. Okay. But I've never really played with like toys and stuff like that. The um, the game system that I had when I was growing up was an Atari. Yes, I'm an 80s baby. I had an Atari. My two favorite games was the one with the horse. The horse was galloping. And you know, the horse got to win the race against the other horses. And then the other one was... um. I think it was asteroids, you know, where you choo -choo 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 -choo, when it goes up, choo -choo 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 -choo, you know, all that stuff like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't be acting like I'm old. Y'all right there with me. So I, I never owned a PlayStation or Xbox, you know, um, who was it at the time? The Nintendo. Yeah, I never had a Nintendo. Um, I love my Atari. I was mad and upset when I had to part ways with my Atari because it really didn't work no more because it's been outdated, but I love the Atari's and stuff. So, um, I'm I'm more girlier now than I ever been, guys. Uh, I I'm doing better. 
Um, I don't see myself, you know, really liking a girl or falling in love with a girl or leaving my husband for a girl, my family. No, none of that stuff. But I mean, everybody, basically everybody is, you know, they're doing it now. They're having fun. I just didn't grow up like in that era. Like now this era, they're doing that. It's nothing, you know, but if it ever arises, you know, that probably could be something, you know, that I would do with my husband, but not alongside, you know, by myself, just be with the woman. I don't see that, but yeah, but y'all let me know if you have ever experienced being with a girl and did it work out or mm -hmm. where you was like, been there, done that, ain't doing it again. But I do. I have one cousin and she's younger than me. And she told me that she had an experience with a girl once. <laughs> I'm not going to call you out, girl, just in case you listen to five. You don't want to buy no your business. But she said it was a horrible experience. She said she would never do it again. So I asked her, I said, well, which part was it? Was it the the actual sex part was weird or, you know, did you have to eat some vagina or something and it just didn't work out? And she was like, yeah, that part. She was like, mm -mm. I like, oh, but speaking of that, that's the same way if a guy, a guy go down on a woman and he says, Mm -mm. you need to wash you don't smell good down there if a woman goes down there on another woman it's going to be the same reaction you got to be clean and I'm telling you if I shall ever try something like that and this chick is dirty and nasty I'm going to fight some damn body see because you don't you don't, first of all you don't got me built up to do some shit that I don't do, and then you're gonna be nasty when I get there. Hell no, I'm fighting a bitch. We ain't doing that. You know, we ain't about to do that. You're not about to do my beat like that. <laughs> I'm gonna fight your ass because that shit ain't cool. Okay. If we're gonna do this experience, it's gonna be a damn good experience. Okay. All right. Y'all wanted me to get deep in my conversation. Here I am. Okay. Now. So to answer your question again, young lady, and to everybody else out there, no, I have never been with the female um, solo dolo, but, um, you know, was, my husband and I have a podcast called Life and Love, and you guys should listen to that. And we go into details more of, you know, that part of the relationship. So just go ahead and listen to that. It's on the Got What You Need Network. Check us out on Spreaker, Apple, Spotify, everywhere you consume podcasts, and also YouTube on GWN Space Network and watch us. Now, that was a little shameless promotion. <laughs> so no, your girl never um, did that. Um, oh, so back to my cousin thing and I asked her I, um, I said so how is it sex wise like do you you know you just rub each other or do you use a, a dildo or something a scrap ball and I'm like how, how does it go because I, I'm a curious person I don't mind talking about it and asking questions because I want to know I'm nosy I want to know so she said no you know we just just rub each other and and it was a whole lot of licking involved and I'm saying to myself I don't want to do that shit I don't want to be rubbing shit getting horny and what I want a dick okay but but if I do do that my dick is gonna be at the party too I'm not about to be solo dolo with a vagina I got that of my own, okay, feel me, <laughs> I'm not messing with y'all no more, I'm getting close to the end of this podcast, and I got one more thing for you guys, before I let you go, and before I wrap it up, I want to let you guys know, um, just a little 
inspiration because I had got a little inspiration a few days ago and I feel that I should share with you guys. So we all know that election time is coming up and early voting is going on right now and I've already voted. The first day they opened, a few hours later, your girl Model E was there, okay? That's one thing I don't play with. I vote. Now, we have more like of Black women um, leaders today. Um, we have our Black vice president, Ms. Kamala Harris, okay? We have um, a new congresswoman that's coming in, um, Kintanji, I think it's Kintanji Brown, shout out to her. Y'all know we got Ms. Maxine Warden in the building. I think she's holding it down. I really like her. She's funny, always telling us to reclaim our time. And also, um, yeah, Kentucky Jackson, she's going to be the first woman to serve on Supreme Court. So <laughs> that's the pearl round. Uh, that, that is going to be dope. Now, we have a lot of inspiration out there. You know how we always talking about we need to get out and we need to stay with each other and we need to create a better environment for, you know, our people, our world, because we know what's going on out there. We understand that there are some people out there who don't want us to have any part of this organization called world. And it is not fair because we pretty much built this world, okay? So I want us to stand strong, put on our armor of God, and I want us to do this thing, okay? I'm seeing more of our black people killing each other okay it needs to be less of that every day i turn on the news multiple times throughout the day we got black folks killing each other and for the past couple months we've been having kids shooting up schools and things like that now all of them are not us okay but we gotta stop okay we gotta stick together um, you guys, please go vote. Vote in your local elections when it comes around because those people matter as well. I never knew that at one point. I always voted for, you know, the presidential candidate. That's what I normally do. But I I was told um, that those people matter too. Um, they are the one that really makes the decision within your immediate community. And so um, I, I wholeheartedly believe that. So just make sure you go and do that. Also, I want to give a shout out to, and y'all know I'm not a religious politics person. I don't like to talk about it on social media, but I want to give a shout out to Stacey Abrams out there in Atlanta. She is doing her the fizzle. I love the empowerment. I love the woman empowerment. I love the black empowerment. And I believe that if we all, you know, work together and do this thing that we can accomplish the main goal, and that main goal is to be happy, healthy, and prosperous. Yes, y'all know I'm always talking about prosperous because we all need to prosper and we all need to flourish. Um, I, I really hope that Stacey Abrams, you know, when her governor see out there in Atlanta, because that is a location where I want to be. I got to get over there in that city. And so, um, yeah, guys, just, just come on, stop with the hatred. Let's just, if we, if we can't love one another, let's coincide with one each other and just be in peace. All right. So, Thank you for tuning to the bi-weekly episode. I am your girl, Model E. And don't forget to watch on YouTube on the Got What You Need Network. Also, um, watch our other hosts of pods that we have. We have the Black Male Podcast. We have the Encouragement and Inspirement Podcast, as well as Politrix. Yes, so if you love politics, Politrix is the one you really want to listen to.
All right, guys, follow me on Instagram at E and Friends Pod and on Twitter at Erica Jones with this E on the end. Peace out.